let's talk a little bit. Let's jump into um, takedowns. So um, let's talk a little bit about your personal philosophy, you know, and, and approach to takedowns in um, in sport jujitsu and, and then also in, in self-defense. So, you know, kind of two separate things there, but uh, kind of sort of. Right. Yeah. But yeah, let's let's talk about those things. Yeah, um, I. I love theoretically love takedowns. Uh, and, and the reason I say theoretically is it's not my strongest uh, aspect, admittedly. I mean, uh, I, I train takedowns. I've always trained takedowns. Um, I've done uh, judo. I've done uh, to the best extent that I can wrestling. I didn't wrestle in high school. So I, you know, trying to learn, trying to learn wrestling as an adult is a, is a bit like trying to learn a foreign language late in life. You know, it's, it's, it's just something that you're hardwired uh, unless you're hardwired to do it young, then it's, it's tricky to pick it up. So, but, um, you know, I, I like to look at, again, just like with any of the ground grappling or any of the other aspects of, of training, I like to look at the, the cross platform application of it. So I like a lot of the clinch work takedowns, um, seeing how we can get, uh, takedowns off of, um, you know, uh, clinch environments you know, rather than just shooting because, uh, honestly, shooting for me these days is with the injuries and everything else. And like I said, I'm not hardwired for that. Um, I think it's a it's beautiful to see. I think it's awesome to to see. And and whenever there's a modification I can have for me personally, then then I'm all about it. But um, for the most part, I like the to look at the clinch takedowns because that that typically is is what's going to apply to self defense situations as well. The the most is that clinch based environment where you have uh, over unders or double unders or you know you have a collar tie or you have you know kind of a Russian tie or a two on one control. Those those kind of things are going to be where you're going to score those takedowns or those control uh, points from that clinch. You know, um, and I think that that takedowns are extremely important to understand on both sides of things and learning how to defend them, learning how to to navigate that area. Um, and, you know, learning how to, of course, execute them, uh, is, it's crucial. Um, I was teaching, I was teaching the other night. Um, it was, uh, just like a, a, a foot sweep. It was like a, a leg pickup foot sweep. I don't know what it's even called because <laughs> we don't, we're not big on names in jujitsu for the takedowns, but, um, basically teaching from the outside and from the inside for this ankle pick and, you know, talking about the difference in, well, if, if this is for judo competition, then I'm going to execute this a little differently. I'm not as concerned about overextending right here because I want the bigger impact, you know, versus this is jiu-jitsu. It's like, I, I can throw somebody with a perfect Ebonsionagi or I can do a little foot sweep and it's still going to be worth the same amount of points in jiu-jitsu competition. You know, it's always two, you know, so um, the bigger concern for us then is the where we're landing, how we're landing, you know, and um, being able to like, hit that position and be in a solid position and a good positive position that you can secure. And then what, what, how fast can we go to work once we hit that position off the landing? So, um, you know, I think that those are important considerations to make whenever we're talking about those. And then of course, looking at, at things, what, what applies, what is gi dependent, what's no gi dependent, um, and then take it from there. But yeah, the, the takedown portion of, of grappling, I think is, is extremely crucial. You have a lot of people in competition these days that are just, um, if somebody doesn't, uh, if it doesn't look like wrestling in submission grappling, it's usually pulling guard. I mean, that's about the only two things. There's not a lot of judo that takes place in, in BJJ anymore. Um, and you see it more in, um, master's levels, you know, and you see it more in like, it's, it's considered, I guess, old school, you know, which is unfortunate. I mean, and there's definitely, there's definitely judo modifications and judo adaptations to apply for BJJ, but it is, it's for sure looks, it has a different complexion in judo competition versus BJJ. Um, and I, I that's why, I, again, I always like to see the things that, that are, uh, that apply to both elements. I love to see the judo things that, that still work in modern day BJJ environments. And then I also like to see the wrestling that works in those BJJ environments, you know, and I don't, I don't hate on people for pulling guard. I think that there's a time and place for it because it's, it is a sport. It's a rule-based and point-based sport. So yeah, if, if that's what you have to do, that's what you have to do. But um, yeah, I don't know. That was a tangent, but. <laughs> you know, uh, as far as grapplers, you know, we've got you know, our audience right here, we've probably got some new grapplers here, some beginners, and we've probably got some advanced grapplers, advanced grapplers that maybe are interested in improving their takedown game. So 
what would be your advice, uh, part one, you know, for, for brand new guys, for beginners to learn as far as their approach to learning takedowns? And then also, you know, what would be your advice for the more advanced people uh, as far as taking on the task of learning on uh, takedowns? Um, I think similar for both, honestly. I think just drilling the hell out of a takedown. I mean, just like drilling it into the dirt, finding one that, that is um, known to be fairly high percentage um, in, in whatever kind of uh, area that you're training it. Let's say it's for competition and um, finding what's, what's a high percentage takedown. Maybe it's a single leg, right? Um, or if, if that's not, you know, uh, in the rules, then maybe finding a foot sweep, finding, finding some kind of takedown that you can mechanically fit your body that feels like, okay, I can do this. I can perform this. And it's known to be high percentage. Okay. Now it's worth training. So get really good at it and just drill it a whole lot. But the, the thing that I advocate with, with any move, whether it's a position transition submission, whatever it is, is linking it as soon as possible, um, finding not only good entries to it and how you can set it up and, and, you know, how you can find it, but also finding those backup plans to it. And I'm a big backup plan advocate because, and it's not just backup plans. It's, it's like, it's like with chain wrestling or something, you know, it's like, if, if I know I'm going to, I'm going to go for this move, I'm going to go for this sweep, this takedown, this, whatever it is. And I know that there's going to be probably two most common responses this guy's going to have to this. So as long as I have in the chamber an answer for either of those common responses, and usually the response is going to be, he's either going to try to throw up resistance against what I'm doing, or he's going to try to like over accelerate what I'm doing. So what does that really boil down to? It's a push or a pull response at the simplest terms. So I need a push response and a pull response to this, to this technique. Now I've successfully created a, a combination, you know, a combo attack that I can throw at somebody. So um, then this is just back to more drilling, just drilling and drilling and drilling. And then, you know, it, along the way of the drilling process, you're going to naturally come across troubleshooting. You're going to naturally come across little fixes and here and there. If you come across a problem that's, you know, it's, it's too difficult for you and your training partners and your coaches and whatever, there's so many resources to be able to, to pick and, and choose from to be able to, to go beyond that, that training. And then, you know, of course that implementing that back into the training and just improving your drilling over time. Uh, I, I think that that's, that's the key to, to all the success in it. You know, that's, what's going to make you better. It's you're, you're never going to rise to the occasion. You're always going to default back to your level of level of proficiency with that technique. So.